The Battle of Arcola or Battle of Arcola was a battle fought between French and Austrian forces 25 kilometers southeast of Verona during the War of the First Coalition, a part of the French Revolutionary Wars. The battle saw a bold maneuver by Napoleon Bonaparte's French Army of Italy to outflank the Austrian army led by Joseph Alvancy and cut off its line of retreat. The French victory proved to be a highly significant event during the third Austrian attempt to lift the siege of Mantua. Alvancy planned to execute a two-pronged offensive against Bonaparte's army. The Austrian commander ordered Paul Davidovich to advance south along the Adige River Valley with one corps while Alvancy led the main army in an advance from the east. The Austrians hoped to raise the siege of Mantua where to go but Sigmund von Wormser was trapped with a large garrison. If the two Austrian columns linked up and if Wormser's troops were released, French prospects were grim. Davidovich scored a victory against Claude Henry Belgrande of Orbois at Caliano and threatened Verona from the north. Meanwhile, Alvancy repulsed one attack by Bonaparte at Bassano and advanced almost to the gates of Verona where he defeated a second French attack at Caldero, leaving Vaubois' Batic division to contain Davidovich. Bonaparte massed every available man and tried to turn Alvancy's left flank by crossing the Adige. For two days the French assaulted the stoutly defended Austrian position at Arcole without success. Their persistent attacks finally forced Alvancy to withdraw on the third day. That day Davidovich routed Vaubois, but it was too late. Bonaparte's victory at Arcole permitted him to concentrate against Davidovich and chase him up the Adige Valley. Left alone, Alvancy threatened Verona again. But without his colleagues' support, the Austrian commander was too weak to continue the campaign and he withdrew again. Wormser attempted a breakout, but his effort came too late in the campaign and had no effect on the result. The third relief attempt failed by the narrowest of margins. Background. See Arcola 1796 Campaign Order of Battle for a detailed list of French and Austrian units. Operations The second relief attempt of the Siege of Mantua ended badly for Austria when General Napoleon Bonaparte routed Feldmarschall de Gobert. Sigmund von Worms's army at the Battle of Bassano. In the sequel, Worms marched for Mantua, evading French attempts to cut him off. He reached there with 16,000 soldiers on 12 September 1796, but was defeated and driven into the fortress by the French on 15. Emperor Francis II of Austria appointed Feldzumeister Joseph Alvinci to lead a reconstituted field army in the third attempt to relieve Mantua. Alvinci, Feldmarschall Lieutenant Paul Davidovich, General Major Johann Rudolf Spork, and Major Franz von Weyrother drew up plans for a two-pronged offensive. The Friol Corps was assigned to Feldmarschall Lieutenant Peter Vitus von Krozdanovich and directed to move west toward Verona. The Tyrol Corps was entrusted to Davidovich and ordered to advance south from the Alps to join Krozdanovich. Wormser would break out from Mantua and attack the French field armies in the rear. Kwozdanovich's 26,432-strong Friol Corps was accompanied by Alvancy as it moved west on Mantua from the Piave River. This force was formed into a 4,397-man advance guard under General Major Friedrich Franz Zava Prince of hohenzollern heckingen a 4,376-strong reserve led by General Major Philipp Pitten von Dannenfeld, and a main corps supervised by Feldmarschall Lieutenant Giovanni Marchese di Provara. This last unit was subdivided into a 9,380-man first line consisting of the brigades of Generals Major Gerhard Ross Elmini and Anton Lipthader, Kisfalud and an 8,279-strong second line composed of brigades led by Generals Major Anton Schubiers von Chobinin and Adolf Brabeck. 
There were 54 line and 20 reserve artillery pieces with the Friol Corps. On 1 November 1796, David Ovich's to Roll Corps numbered 18,427 infantry and 1,049 cavalry. The corps was split into six brigade-sized columns under Generals Major Johann Loudon, Joseph Oxcave von OCSKO, Spork, and Joseph Philip Ukasevich and Colonel Sulin. Loudon commanded 3,915 infantry and 362 cavalry in Column 1. Oxke led 4,200 foot soldiers and 463 horsemen in Column 2. Spork directed 2,560 infantry in Column 3. Vukasevich supervised both Column 4 with 3,772 foot and 30 horse and Column 5 with 2,958 foot and 120 horse, and Sullen led 1,022 infantry and 74 cavalry in Column 6. The Tyrol Corps counted 40 line and 20 reserve guns. Wormser commanded 23,708 soldiers within Mantua. However, only 12,420 were reported as capable of taking the field. In addition, General Major Anton Ferdinand Mitrovsky's brigade occupied the upper Brenta River, connecting the wings under Davidovich and Kwozdanovich. Mitrovsky commanded about 3,000 men. Bonaparte deployed a 10,500-man division under General of Division Claude Henry Belgrand de Vorbois at Lavis to watch Davidovich. At Bassano, General of Division André Massena's 9,540 soldiers defended the line of the Brenta River. The 8,340 troops of General of Division Pierre Augaru covered the Adige River. General of Division Charles Edward Jennings de Kilmaine with 8,830 soldiers blockaded Worms's large garrison in Mantua. General of Division François Macquard's 2,750-man infantry reserve was posted at Villa Francaise di Verona while General of Division Thomas Alexandre Duma with 1,600 troopers of the cavalry reserve was stationed at Verona. The Austrians went to a lot of trouble to conceal the strength of Davidovich's corps from their enemies. The ruse was so successful that Bonaparte ordered Vaubois to advance and defeat his opponent so that he could shift 3,000 troops to help fight. Alvin C. On 2 November, Vaubois attacked Davidovich near Kembra, inflicting 1,116 casualties before retiring. Though the French suffered only 650 killed and wounded, this included 280 soldiers of the 85th Line Infantry Demi Brigade. This loss seems to have seriously damaged the unit's morale. The next day, Vaubois pulled back to Caliano. On 1 November, the Friol Corps began crossing the Pialve. Bonaparte elected to attack the Austrians on the Brenta and called Auguru and Macquard East to join Massena. In the Second Battle of Bassano on 6 November, the Austrians held off Bonaparte's attacks. French losses numbered 3,000 killed, wounded, and missing, plus an additional 508 men and one howitzer captured. In this hard-fought engagement, the Austrians lost 534 killed, 1,731 wounded, and 558 captured for a total of 2,823 casualties. Bonaparte quickly pulled back to Verona. Davidovich attacked Vorbois at the Battle of Caliano on 6 November but was repulsed after hard fighting. He renewed his assault at daybreak on the 7th. After holding out all day, French morale collapsed in the late afternoon and Vaubois men fled the battlefield in a panic. Between 2 and 7 November, Vaubois division suffered 4,400 killed, wounded, and missing and lost six artillery pieces. The Austrians also lost heavily, with 2,000 killed and wounded plus a further 1,500 taken prisoner. In a public announcement, Bonaparte vented his fury at the poor performance of the 39th and 85th Line Infantry Demi-Brigades. 
poor communications plagued the Austrian commanders throughout the campaign. This was a consequence of the wide separation between the two wings. Furthermore, many of Alvancy's men were indifferently equipped raw recruits who straggled badly. The Austrians also suffered from a serious shortage of officers. After Alvancy sent him a mistaken report that Massena was reinforcing Vaubois, Davidovich became very cautious. The report was sent on 9 November but only reached its recipient on the 11th, which was typical of the Austrian communications problems. Alvancy also repeatedly urged Davidovich to speed up his march toward Verona. Alvancy's advance guard under GM Friedrich of Hohenzollern Heckingen pressed toward Verona. Near that city, he bumped into Massena on the 11th of November and was forced to pull back after losing 400 men in a sharp combat. In a sleet storm on the 12th, Hohenzollern fought off the attacks of Massena and Augeru in the Battle of Caldero. When reinforcements under Brabeck, Shubiers, and Provera arrived later in the day, Bonaparte called off the futile attacks and drew his troops back within the walls of Verona. The Austrians reported losses of 1,244 officers and men. French losses were estimated at 1,000 killed and wounded, plus an additional 800 men and two guns captured. Maneuver after three sharp defeats. Even Bonaparte became very despondent about his chances of survival. He deployed Macquard and 3,000 men to hold Verona. A slightly reinforced Vaubois clung to a strong position with about 8,000 troops keeping Davidovich's 14,000 soldiers bottled up in the Adige Valley. To blockade Worms's garrison within Mantua, Colmaine could count only 6,626 men after providing reinforcements to other commands. This left Bonaparte a field force consisting of Massena's 7,937, Augaro's 6,000, a reserve of 2,600 infantry plus cavalry for a total of 18,000 soldiers. By this time, Alvancy's main force numbered about 23,000 men. Historian David G. Chandler wrote, Like a juggler keeping three balls in the air at once, Bonaparte had to balance the dangers of the three sectors against each other, keeping them in clear relative perspective. Although he had singled out Alvancy as his main target, it was only too clear that an aggressive move on the part of Davidovich or even by Worms might compel the French to abandon their operations against the main Austrian army and move every available man to reinforce the threatened area. Defeat on any sector could well spell catastrophe and the destruction of the Army of Italy. Unknown to the French, Alvancy planned to thread pontoon bridge across the adage below Verona at Zevier on 15 November at nightfall. Meanwhile, Bonaparte determined on an audacious strategy. He forced March Massena and Augeru along the west bank of the Adige to a bridging site at Ronco al Adige, behind Alvancy's left flank. Once he moved his army across the river, he planned to move north to cut the Austrian line of retreat and seize the enemy's trains and artillery park. On the far bank was an area of marshy land that troops could not penetrate which meant that all movement was limited to the causeways or dikes on the banks of the river Adige, and the causeways on the banks of a small tributary called the Alpone River that flowed into it from the north. The Alpone was only 20 yards wide and 5 feet deep. In the difficult terrain, the French soldiers might have an advantage. Further, the Austrians would not be able to use their superior numbers in the restricted battlefield. From Ronco, the northbound road followed a dike for about 1.5 miles to a bridge on the east side of which was the village of Arcaol. From there, the road continued going north on the east bank of the stream to San Bonifacio near the main highway. The dikes along the Alpo near Arcaol were 26 feet high and had very steep faces. Another road followed a dike from Ronco northwest to Belfiore and on to Caldero. 
battle. First day by dawn on 15 November, Bonaparte's troops reached the intended crossing, and soon afterward Chef de Brigade Antoine Francois André Ossi's engineers had a pontoon bridge in operation. Augereau's division crossed first and headed east and north toward Arcole. Massena's soldiers followed and, to cover the left flank, took a causeway leading north and west toward Belfiore di Porcile. Alvancy posted Oberstwenzel Brigido's four battalions in the area. Of these, two battalions and two cannons defended Arcole. These troops repulsed Augereau's leading demi brigade under General of Brigade Louis Andre Barn. Before long, most of the French soldiers were lying in the lee of the causeway to shelter from the searing fire. Brigido pulled every available man into the combat. Augereau threw in demi-brigades led by generals of Brigade Jean-Antoine Verdier and Pierre Verne. At midday, Austrian reinforcements led by General Major Anton Ferdinand Mitrovsky began arriving to help the defenders. Soon, Bonn, Verdier, Verne and General of Brigade Jean Lannis were all wounded and the attack completely stalled. On the western flank, Alvancy sent the brigades of Abbas Lieutenant Alois von Kvassenai and General Major Adolf Brabeck to seize the French pontoon bridge. They collided with Massena near beyond, midway between Belfiore and Ronco. Initially successful, the Austrians were soon driven back beyond Belfiore after Brabeck's troops accidentally fired on Gavassini's men, causing a panic. Once they reached Belfiore, the French watched as the Austrian trains rolled east on the main highway, out of their reach. Attempting to break the stalemate near Arcole, Bonaparte ordered General of Brigade Jean-Joseph Guillou with two demi brigades to boat across the adage below its confluence with the Alponet, Alberado de Digger. He also sent a French battalion across the Alpone by boat near its mouth. The latter unit fought its way north along the East Bank Dyke, trying to inspire his men to attack. Bonaparte grabbed a flag and stood in the open on the dyke, about 55 paces from the bridge. He remained miraculously untouched, but several members of his staff were hit by the intense fire and his aide-de-camp, Jean-Baptiste Muron, was killed. An unknown officer dragged Bonaparte out of the line of fire and the commanding general ended up in the muddy ditch. Adding to the confusion, the Austrians launched a sortie from Arcole and defeated the French battalion on the east bank. In the evening, Guillou crossed at Alberado and eventually managed to flush the Austrian defenders out of Arcole. At midnight, worried that Davidovich was about to fall upon his rear, Bonaparte withdrew Guillou from Arcole and pulled most of his troops back across the adage. He left a garrison on the Austrian side of the river to hold his bridgehead. Second day Alvancy left Hohenzollern's troops near Verona to guard against an attack from that city. The Austrian leader ordered Provera with six battalions to attack from Belfiore. Alvancy reinforced Mitrovsky to a total of 14 battalions, including the brigades of Schubiers and Obus Franz Sticker, and instructed him to advance south from Markeol. The two forces would march at dawn on 16 November and converge on the French bridgehead. Alvancy sent two battalions to guard Alberado against a repetition of Guillou's attack. Provera's effort came to grief when he ran into Massena. Brabeck was killed during the encounter and the Austrians were chased back to Belfiore with the loss of five cannons. During the morning, Mitrovsky and Augereau engaged in a seesaw battle that ended when the Austrians fell back to Arcole. Mitrovsky positioned Sticker's four battalions on the western dike, lined the eastern dike with four battalions under Brigido, and packed the rest of his troops into Arcole. These intelligent dispositions blocked Bonaparte's repeated attempts to seize the village during the day. French attempts to cross the adage at Alberado and the Alpone near its mouth both failed. At nightfall, Bonaparte withdrew Massena and Augereau toward the bridgehead, but sizable forces stayed on the Austrian side of the adage. 
the former slave Joseph Hercule Domingue, French cavalry lieutenant, was promoted to captain and given a ceremonial sword by Bonaparte for his actions in executing a surprise attack on the Austrian cavalry on this day of the battle. Third day on 17 November, Alvancy withdrew Hohenzollern to Caldero, closer to his main body. Again, Provera held Belfiore while Mitrovsky defended Arcole. During the night, Bonaparte's engineers floated some pontoons into the Alpone where they built a bridge near its mouth. Augaro's division crossed the bridge and began fighting its way along the eastern dike. A French battalion and some cavalry also set out from Legnago and joined Augaro later in the day. Meanwhile, two of Massena's demi-brigades led by General of Brigade Jean-Giles André Robert attacked along the western dike. By early afternoon, Massena drugged Provera near Belfiore again. Alvancy recalled both Provera and Hohenzollern toward the east and began feeding some of the latter's troops into the combat at Arcole. There, the battle went back and forth all day. At 3 p.m., a large column of Austrian reinforcements surged out of Arcole and drove back the troops under Robert. Augaro's men on the east bank saw this development and also fell back. By 4 p.m., Augaro's rattled division pulled back across the pontoon bridge to the west bank. Just when the day seemed lost, Massena appeared with reinforcements from the western flank. With these, he ambushed the Austrians on the western dike and sent him reeling back toward Arcole. Heartened, Augaro's men recrossed to the east bank of the Alpone and renewed the fight. Massena and Augaru finally battled their way into Arkle around 5 p.m. A lieutenant and 25 guides aided the final attack by riding into the Austrian rear area and blowing several bugles to create the impression of a large force. The French followed up their success by advancing north and threatening to block the main east-west highway. Alvancy threw in Schubert's brigade to hold off the French, and this allowed Provera's division to escape to the east.